Welcome to the Chiro Session, where chiropractors share their stories and lessons learned in practice. The intention of the Chiro Session is to provide resources and a community that will help chiropractors realize their innate potential. So join the Chiro Session today. Welcome to this special episode of the Chiro Companion where I have a conversation with 2016 New Zealand College of Chiropractic graduates Chelsea, McDad and Chris. We discuss their experiences so far and their goals for the next stage in life and practice. This was a really insightful episode capturing a moment in time where these highly accomplished graduates are about to start their life in practice. So without further ado, welcome to the Chiro Station and this is where the conversation starts. Welcome everyone to the Cairo Companion. With me I have Chris, Chelsea and McDad. Uh, they're going to be sharing their experiences so far and what they're about to go into. Uh, this is going to be all sorts of fun talking about chiropractic philosophy, where the future of chiropractic is, these guys' journey so far and what they're about to head into. I'm super excited to get into it. So welcome guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Very good. So who's going to start sharing first? Go. Uh, brief, uh, one minute, because I'm sure you guys have practiced this in front of the mirror at home. Well, I did when I was your guys' age in practice. Like, what what got you into chiropractic? Right. Okay, well, I'll start. So, a little bit different to um, most people's sort of way to get into. But um, I was doing sport and exercise science initially and got through the year and I just didn't think it was what I wanted to do. It wasn't practical enough. Um, so, I looked at other options and I was like, oh, chiropractic, you know, back pain, you know, clicking, lots of money. So I looked into it and I was like, wow, okay, cool. So got into a first year and I was like, philosophy class with like Eric Russell and Phil and I was just like, holy moly, this is not what I thought and it just changed my mind about chiropractic and I fell in love with the philosophy about the whole, um, yeah, healing the body from within. Yeah, so then ever since then, just been on the straight and narrow with that. Yeah. Nice man, reformed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> New man. <laughs> yeah. Um... I've been going to chiropractor um, since I was eight years old and um, I'd always wanted to do something in the healthcare profession and I always thought that, you know, your typical doctor, medical doctor, going into surgery and everything. And then going along, it came obvious that chiropractor was kind of staring me in the face and I was like, well, why wouldn't I do it? And so it was actually in, I think, year 12 or something, I was... Me and my mum went for a walk up the road and um, we were just, I was like, oh, I don't know, just jumping from this to that. And then that walk was amazing because that's when we were like, all right, sweet, I'm going to do chiropractic. And we organised what we needed to do, talked with my chiropractor at the time on the process on what I needed to do. And and then the journey began, it began and um, haven't looked back since. And what was also interesting is that um, turning up to AUT and realizing, oh my God, these people like actually kind of think the same as me and have similar personalities, which I didn't think was. I thought I was just kind of like a loner in that sense. So that was that was refreshing to know that um, I was in the right profession. And yeah, awesome. Mine's similar to yours. Um, I saw a chiropractor at eight months old, so I'm kind of like a chiropractic baby in that sense. Uh, been through the medical system, nothing was working. Parents were losing their minds and thought they'd try the chiropractor and lo and behold, uh, that seemed to do the trick. Uh, so I've been under care since then. Uh, but I still, yeah, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I was jumping from this and that, going through high school, uh, wanting to be a pilot, wanting to be a physio, wanting to be all these different things. Uh, then I had a, an accident where I, I broke a lot of things uh, and again went through the medical system and, and nothing worked uh, and then went back to the chiropractor and yeah. Put me on the straight and narrow, so to speak. Uh, and from there, yeah. All puns intended. All puns intended, yeah. And then again, yeah, going to AUT and meeting people that were like-minded kind of reinforced that it was the yeah. right thing to do. Um, and all I was told was how academically rigorous it was going to be and how hard it was going to be. And I was just thinking, what have I got myself into? But five years later, I'm, I'm a week out, so yeah. something went right. That's incredible. Yeah. Are you guys excited? So excited. Yeah. Excited, scared, nervous, yeah. everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All of the emotions. I'm in a weird limbo. Yeah. Like it doesn't seem quite real. I know what's happening. Yeah. And I know I've only got a week to go. But when you pop that balloon. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta pop those balloons at the end. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's quite like a significant thing, I, I feel. Like popping the balloon because you're like, okay, 
wow, okay, it's actually the end. Yeah. <laughs> it seems so insignificant. Yeah. yeah, but I think it has a lot of meaning to it. So. And talking to people, um, some of the mentors and things, they're really pushing for a whole year to, to graduate as one, mm. which is really cool, just reinforcing, because at the college, it's kind of, they're reinforcing that unity and that mm. um, support network within, within each class. Um, and sort of trialing that with us, they're really pushing so that we can all sort of leave together, which is quite cool. Um, no, I think that's a really nice idea. Because that's something that I wanted to talk about, so we might as well talk about it now, is how different things are with you guys. Because you, you guys are the first to go through and not have to sit exit exams because mm. you've already been assessed prior. Mm. Um, so by the time you kind of get to quote unquote graduation at the end of your fourth year at study at the chiropractic college, you are effectively practically. Yeah. Yeah. Um, whereas you compare that to any year previous and you were quote practice ready, but you had to sit this kind of mm, exactly. final boss at the end and yeah. you know, vanquish him three times to actually <laughs> um, so, so what has that experience been like for you guys because we were a little bit of a guinea pig class as well and you guys mm. certainly were what was your experience going into the chiropractic center and everything changing on you week to week um, and how do you think that's strengthened your resolve listened your resolve and changed things over the last 18 months i kind of feel that it kind of it challenges you because it keeps you on your toes and so at first we we're kind of everyone kind of thought the whole world had been tipped upside down in a sense but when you actually think about it that's kind of what it will be like in practice. Like you can't plan for things to happen. And I think that's what a lot of people had done. They were like, okay. And so they'd planned their whole semester almost. And then for everything to kind of change, um, they kind of tested people and um, separated the, the men from the boys, I suppose, <laughs> I suppose you could say. <laughs> but Yeah, and in my opinion, it's, uh, it's a little different because mindset-wise, it's very different unusual to have something just flip over in, in your degree mm. like that um but when you think about it it's all for the betterment of the future years which is like oh this is cool you know okay this is going to be better for the next year i think one of the biggest changes that hit us were um so back in the day the new patient exam used to be just the one visit and you got credited for it but they changed it to you have to see this person for three visits in order to mm. for it to count uh, which totally changed a lot of people's like planning and stuff because back in the day i think it used to get abused a little bit so that's why they wanted to change it, but um, we accepted open arms and it just, they were quite lenient with a few of the things, but yeah, no, I think it, all in all, was a really good experience to change things for the better, but um, yeah, it had its moments of like, oh wow, okay. Let's it took a psyche yeah. shift. Yeah. Like yeah. you really had to be like, you know, because suddenly you had to see three people for it to count for one, I never, it had never crossed my mind that I wasn't going to see this person mm. for more than yeah. three visits, but just putting that sort of importance around those first three it really mm. threw a lot of people um and so that was probably the big one that and it brought a lot of negativity to the class yeah um just because it was suddenly harder when it didn't need to be mm. um but people got over it it was you know this last half of the year the class has just been way more whole you know people working together the um, fatigues, they could, yeah, yeah you know everything's been fun and everything's been awesome people have been looking forward to going to to shift and looking after people where I feel there's a little bit of anxiety before that, knowing that they had to not only hit these requirements, but it took a little bit more to hit them as well. Mm. So that's probably the big change I, I feel. No, and then the, the whole unsupervised thing where um, it could carry on from the previous CP. So you just had to finish off the requirements mm -hmm. and get unsupervised in, which made it so much more fun because you were unsupervised quicker, essentially. Mm. And just doing your own thing with with the people you love to to check and adjust so and the the mentor relationship became real interesting after that because it's yeah. more of a on the similar level in terms of they're just kind of helping you with different ways to approach things um rather than a very authoritative level which is good yeah awesome because how does it feel to be the uh, most prepared graduating class ever so far are we <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i feel ready yeah yeah, yeah. um we're definitely ready uh, it's just Again, like I said, it doesn't feel like it's happening. You know, Quite real, yeah. you know we're all, like most of us are going to be walking out um, next week, and then a week later we'll be walking into another practice. Mm. Um, some of us a little bit lo longer down the road, but I, like most of us can can definitely do it. Uh, it's just been rigorous. Yeah, well, of course you can. You guys are prepared. You honestly are prepared. Um, mm. there's, there's going to be heaps of lessons learned, and it's, it, it, that's why they call it practice. Mm -hmm. It doesn't stop. You, you continue to refine your art. You continue to get better and work on the things that you aren't as proficient at. But something that definitely helped me was 
instead of focusing on the chinks in your armor, focus on what makes your armor shine. And if you can really polish that up and have that look great, it gives you a lot more confidence, a lot more ease in practice, rather mm. than always going, shit, I have this weakness in my shoulder joint. <laughs> and if, if only I had stronger, blah, 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 whatever, adjusting skills, communication skills, whatever it happened to be, yeah. then I would be the greatest chiropractor. And that, that really messes with your mind in early practice because you can't help focus on that fear. Yeah. But if you go, right, I'm really good at this. Mm. I'm really good at just focusing on the adjustment. So get really, really good at that. And that's... Yeah, yeah and I think you were talking to James last time um, about doing an online sort of strength thing. Yeah. Yeah, so pretty keen to try one of those where you could kind of identify what you're really good at and what you resonate with. So it might be interesting to see. It's interesting what you brought up with on... Um, yeah, focusing on the the better parts because I think it was like earlier this year or end of last year or something and I was just focusing I, I was just having like a really bad couple of weeks and I just lost my mojo I was just like I cannot get these side postures and it was really like getting me down I was I just lost all self-confidence in it and then that tumbled over to then I lost all self-confidence with the rest of my adjusting and I was like what am I, like, what's going on? Like, I can't adjust, <laughs> like, the spine, anywhere in the spine. And um, and it was almost just what kind of shifted was I had, I just said everything that was going on to one of my friends and and then from then I just kind of got it back and because and we kind of just, we helped each other and we were like, like, you can adjust. And <laughs> I think I just kind of needed someone to vent to and just <laughs> someone to kind of reinforce that, like, you're fine, don't worry about it. Um, and, yeah. and that's the biggest thing that I found heading into my early practice is how isolated I was. Because mm. all of a sudden I had all these friends and colleagues, I had a buddy that I could go talk to and I was like, man, I just yeah. had a terrible week, just nothing was working, it was awful. But because you could share that problem and talk about it mm. and kind of realize that you're not alone, that made everything so much easier. But when you're in practice by yourself in your own four walls, it's very hard to get yeah. yourself out of that funk. Mm. Um, which is why you know I, I wanted to create this platform. Which is why I want to have a conversation with you guys and talk about it and and share these experiences because they are that's us. This is our profession. This is who we are. And if we can share these issues, we can figure out well what are everyone's strengths around us. Because mm. if say for example my strength is chatting to people, but my adjusting is not so hot, I know that I can talk to someone who's good at adjusting to give me some skills, and I can maybe help them with some communication yep. mm. stuff. And then if we can combine our abilities it's going to be so much better for the patient and so much yeah. better for the profession so that's Definitely. what i'm hoping to create but it sounds like you already did it which is awesome yeah nice so. go here renee <laughs> yeah <laughs> success very cool so super curious to hear these guys haven't told me yet so it's like a christmas present <laughs> so, uh what are you guys going to do Right. Well, um, after exploring a lot of options yep. um, myself, so I was that one guy who was just like not satisfied with the first thing that came to me. Um, so I think I started the process probably six months ago, nice. six to eight months ago, just kind of putting the feelers out there. Um, and I was kind of dead set about leaving New Zealand, to be honest, because I was just born and raised here. I thought I'd get out and explore the world a little and grow that way. So um, most of my CV uh, CVs went to Australia, Singapore, that sort of thing. And I had some really good feedback. Um, ended up going to, to Australia even to have a look at a couple of practices. Um, but then an opportunity came up uh, in Wellington, and which I couldn't miss, you know, because of the experience there. It was probably more what I was after than the money per se. So, um, yeah, we accepted a, accepted a job just recently down in Wellington. So, yeah, looking forward to it. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, so you're uh, yeah, starting mid Jan. And uh, yeah, I think Chris will follow up with that. Yeah, so I'll be actually working with McDad uh, oh, really? in the same yeah. practice. Yeah, what? Um, very cool. Yeah, it's really yeah. exciting because, like you said, you need that person that you can chat to. And McDad and I work really well together. Yeah. So the fact that we can do that and then also have that, uh, what does Phil say, co-op petition? Yeah. Where you're, you know, <laughs> it's yeah. all about competition. Yeah, supporting one another, but then also pushing one another. Yeah. I think that's massive, and we've done that the past year um, since getting to know one another. So I think. Being able to do that in practice is going to be really beneficial. Awesome. But same same as McDad, I couldn't miss that. It was I wrote I wrote the day before I, I saw the um, the ad for it. <clears throat> I wrote everything I wanted down in the practice: the, the the technique style, the type of patient, 
location, things like that. I wrote it all down on a piece of paper. Uh, and then the next day, uh, I see this ad and every single thing that I wrote down the night before was on it, uh, which I thought was <laughs> insane. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. so I just, for the rest of the year, just everything I want, I write it down. Yeah. Um, and it's come up more than once. That's how the universe works. Yeah. I thought it was, yeah. Um, but I th- I'm really excited. And yeah, we'll be starting up in January uh, 16th. And that's why I'm in that, in that weird limbo phase where I know it's happening and I know I need to get prepared, <laughs> um, but I'm just still so... Enjoy of, the break. Yeah. You need it. It's going to be good. Yeah, definitely. Because yeah, I started straight back in, I think I started 5th of January or something, mm. um, but actually having December off was enough. It mm. really was. Just just take a break, hang out with friends and family, go on a bit of a holiday, and then you kind of go, oh, I want to get back into it now. Mm. Like, I'm ready to dive back in because it's fun, right? <laughs> And you get in and you're like, whoa, this isn't what I expected. <laughs> okay. I need a holiday again. I need another month. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Give me time. <laughs> um, well, I actually don't have any break, really. Yeah. Um, so I'm actually heading down to Nelson to join Adam in practice. Yeah. Um, Who I hear great things about, by the way. So yeah. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> always a positive. <laughs> um, no, but he's um, recently just bought the practice. Um, and so for the first two weeks, um, the previous chiropractor will be there to kind of help me and, um, kind of help me find my feet a bit and try to give me as much of his knowledge as he can. And then it'll just be me and Adam from, um, basically start of December. So it's, it's daunting, it's exciting, it's crazy and, um, but yeah, I can't wait. Fantastic. That's yeah. a really good way to do it. Mm. Instead of starting your own thing from scratch, buying a yeah. practice that's already existing. Because mm. the, the patients will change and adapt and be different because of your personality mm. and your practice style. But having that base already there, yeah. is huge, huge. Yeah, and so like I've, um, over the last year I suppose, I've gone down quite a bit and just mm. going to observe um, nice. quite often and um, get, to, get to know the patients a little bit, get to know all the systems and um, the paperwork and kind of how everything works and um, yeah and That's just awesome. trying to listen to all the communication that the that the chiropractor down there already uses and try to try to store that in my brain <laughs> somewhere and yeah. for future so yeah how long did you um, know that you were going to move down there um as soon as Adam did eh <laughs> <laughs> well Originally, that wasn't the plan as such, um, but an opportunity came up that couldn't be missed, and um, and we'd talked about it, and um, it definitely was like a, a team decision that we decided, yeah, like, let's do it. Um, and then pretty soon after, um, they started working up the thing of, we're going to buy the practice, then that's when I... That's when I was like, yeah, I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll come down too. <laughs> yeah. Get started. Yeah. Sounds like a good opportunity. Yeah. And having gone down to spend a bit of time in Nelson, what have you thought of that community? Do you feel like you're feeling quite I well? love it. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. It's, I'm excited to get out of the hustle and bustle of Auckland, I think. Yeah. Um, it's definitely a lifestyle down there. Um, everyone's a lot more friendly in the South Island. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a beautiful place. And, yeah, it, it's funny because you think that, oh, it's quite a small community, you won't be able to get many people through the door, but you'll be so surprised. Like, it doesn't you necessarily have to be... You in New Zealand that are all rural. Yeah, you don't have to be in such a busy place. Community. So, no. yeah, no. Well, that's what's been a big surprise. So. Definitely. And you look at those rural communities and who's in them and people talk about it more. Mm. So with my practices, for example, my practices, like I have <laughs> the practices that I work in, so Papakura and Puki. Mm. So I'm mainly based in the Papakura one, which is a commuter belt area. Yeah. So just kind of on the like southern edge of Auckland, really. Mm. But then Pukekohe is a little bit further south, like another 20 minutes, and that's definitely rural. Yeah. And you look at the referrals that the Pukekohe branch gets, mm. and they're way, way, way higher than ours. And it's just literally that location of being more rural, a little bit further away from the city. Yeah. Mm. A lot more kind of farmers and people doing community events and helping each other mm. out, and they talk more. Whereas you look at those people who are more commuters and it, yeah, it, yeah it's like it takes three different things for them to actually come in yeah as a rural person it's like hey go see this car they're like great they're like all right i'll look in tomorrow <laughs> yeah but what's <laughs> also <laughs> crazy is that um there's some patients that drive a couple hours just to come up to see you well, it's because that's nothing 
Yeah. It's not fun. But it's just like, if, if that was a practice in Auckland, it's almost unheard of. No. <laughs> so, yeah. That's pretty cool. That's really cool. Mm. Super exciting. Definitely. So where in Wellington is it? Do you tell more? <laughs> Can I tell more? Yep. Uh, it's in Miramar. Uh, there's also um, a practice in the, uh, he's got another practice in the CBD. Okay. Um, then I, I, I should say it anyway, I'm looking, I'm really looking at building that up. Uh, just because I have some contacts in the CBD of Wellington, and I think they'd be they'd go hand in hand together. Cool. So that's kind of like a personal goal for myself um, to know that I can build a practice, um, as well as being an associate. Um, so that's kind of my, my two top goals at the moment. That is the goal. That's what you have to do as yeah. an associate. It's like, well, how fast can I build this thing? Yeah. And if all my attention is literally as focused as on the yeah. business. Yeah. How do I create this amazing thing? Yeah. yeah. That's cool, man. So are you going to be based at the CBD as well? Yeah. Well, we don't know exactly for sure yet. Okay. Um, because we'll probably be split between the two for a bit. Yeah. But, um, yeah, no, just being born and raised in Auckland is a little different to, to what I experienced in Wellington, so that's going to be a nice learning experience in itself. Wellington's a cool city. Man. Yeah, no, so all, all the cars that yeah. I talked to have gone down there are just having an absolute blast. Yeah. Yeah, really, really, really good mm. times. So that's cool. Now, it's definitely going to be a journey. Uh, it's going to be an adventure. It's cool uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. There's a lot of um, angst as well. Because, yeah, born and raised in Auckland, I'll be moving out. I'll be doing all these different, yeah. these new things. Yeah. Uh, like and cooking I'll, for yourself. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I don't know yeah. how to do that. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, so it's going to be toast for a wee while. Yeah. Um, Oats. Yeah. <laughs> Oats, baked beads. Yeah. Um, and then I'm sure McDad and I are going to get sick of each other, so. Probably yeah. <laughs> love. Yeah, man. It's I'll give him a close, eh? So. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. We've got six months. Yeah, we'll, we'll reassess then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then whereabouts is your practice down in Nelson? Um, it's in the in the town. In town, cool. yeah. Oh, so that's awesome. Because mm. how many chiropractors are there? Um, I think there's maybe about ten chiropractors, yeah. but yeah. maybe about four officers. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so that's what I was, what I was thinking. Mm. Which is nice, but they all seem to get on quite well. Yeah, at least definitely. from what I've heard. It's yeah, a lot, a lot of community, and quite happy for you guys to be chatting between mm. each other, which is absolutely really nice. And I think really important. Tight knit. Yeah, that, that, that's obviously definitely lacking in Auckland. Mm. Um, just, I don't know why, but it just seems to be the way. But yeah, in, yeah kind of Nelson, it seems like there's like, mm. this cool kind of group where you can get together and chat about yeah, stuff. Yeah, well, that's what they've done in the past and stuff, so... Um, Hoping yeah. you'll be part of that as well. Yeah, definitely. Very cool. Very cool. And what's your dream and vision? What do you want to make the practice become? Um, well, so it's it's a multidisciplinary practice at the moment, um, which I love, and I think that's kind of what I always wanted anyway. Um it's interesting, Chris, you're talking about like writing things down and having the techniques you want to practice and all of that. Um, I knew the techniques that I really liked before um, we'd even heard of this practice in Nelson. And um, and then when I found out that those are the techniques that they do, like SOT, NET, and then um, still manual techniques, I was just like, you're kidding me. Yeah. <laughs> Another reason why I couldn't, couldn't pass the opportunity. So... That was, um, I never quite wrote it down, but it was always like replaying in my head. So it was still like, that was my vision. And, and I was like, yeah, that's what I want to do. And so to lead up to that, I've been going to different seminars and um, to really try to be as prepared as possible to sure. get started into it. Um, but I don't know. It's, um, it's always developing, I guess. But um, I want to be like in the community and you walk around the town and people know your name and you get stopped by patients. That's a big one, eh? Yeah. That community immersion. Yeah. I really want to get into that. Yeah. So I want to do like a boxing match. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's already doing one, so yeah, no, go enjoy it. Yeah. Good yeah, so um, what was it, vision? for? Yeah, so... Yeah, so Success, obviously, in all aspects of life, to be honest. Um, so you obviously want to see, oh, I want to see a lot of people and just help as many people as I can. But also I want to be a really great communicator. Um, so I was watching a documentary on Netflix. Um, Tony Robbins. Yeah, so he was, he was saying... I am not your guru. That's the one. That's the one, yeah. So he was um, at school one day and his, his teacher came up to him and said, Tony, you're not a speaker. You know, and he was like, what do you mean? He's like, you're a communicator. You know, which really hit me. I was like, wow, that that's so different, but, you know, very powerful. Yeah. So I want to be able to, to 
communicate to people really well about chiropractic and why they need it, you know, um, and then just build on that and be able to, yeah, thrive with it. Yeah, I mean, other than that, just win in life. <laughs> <laughs> win. Yeah, that's good. Cool. Winning. Cool. So, what do you what do you guys think is your biggest strength? What's the thing that shines in your eye the most? Mine would be my rapport with people, I feel. Yeah. Um, I feel like I can talk with them and create a space where they know that it's going to be beneficial to them and they know that they can say what they need to say um, without judgment or anything like that. That's been a big one, and it's how I've built my practice at, in, at the chiropractic center at NZCC. Um, so that's probably my biggest one. And then communication is built off that because that's been good. But I like my dad. I, I want to be so good at that. I want to crush it. Um, and I want to. I want to do more more public speaking. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's been one thing that I haven't done. Um, I emceed at DG at the start of this year, and that was absolutely terrifying. <laughs> uh, and I was like, I'm never going to do that again. <laughs> but now, like looking in hindsight, I was like, that was really, really good, yeah. and I I need to do more stuff like that. So it's also yeah, they kind of go hand in hand. Cool. Mm-hmm. Cool. Um. Such a Kiwi, can't think of what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not good at anything. <laughs> I think from what patients have said, they say like I give off a, that I'm confident. Yeah. But it's it's funny, like the people that have said that and I'm just like, wow, really? Like, <laughs> <laughs> because I don't know, I think I can make them feel at ease that I can be their person to like their healthcare provider basically. Um, so that's quite cool. Biggest strength is being humble, I think. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the most humble person you've ever met. <laughs> that's good. But, that's good. yeah, I do like to, I think definitely that rapport of what you said, um, is quite good and I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, similarly to these guys, I mean, when Chris pretty much hit it on the head with um, the rapport building with the patients just because I think that's also a big thing to do with our personalities like I think mm. the way we gel is because we're really easy with each other and like you know uh, we can really um, get to their level in terms of what they're experiencing um, and personally on um, part of that I reckon um, it's a bit of a adjusting I think which is yeah. quite cool that we're fortunately at NZCC we get taught quite a bit so I think that's one of the strengths we can bring out of the college as well so, yeah quite happy with that yeah and then obviously you need to work on a little bit more communication but we've been quite fortunate actually to be um heading over to the ballistic seminar oh, cool. in mm-hmm. november yeah. yeah so uh banking on utilizing that for a bit <laughs> Definitely. yeah it's fantastic mm. yeah really really good well, did, pretty did good you guys listen to the last year a couple of years yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah yeah fantastic really, really just good heaps of gems right like in terms of just patient communication and or building so it's well, he's a professional chiropractic patient exactly. <laughs> he's, got, he's got a few kind of things yeah. to communicate to us because I mean like we were talking about a little bit before we started recording this it's really it's really hard to be inside a chiropractic business and be the chiropractor in there and have that ability to look from the outside in mm-hmm. and what does it look like so that's something that you guys will really bring in and be a really big advantage to the practice that you guys mm-hmm. are walking into is that fresh pair of eyes well what is going on here and, and with all the new knowledge that I have as a brand new fresh graduate, you have the most up-to-date stuff. You've spent the most time with Heidi as she's talking about the different things and Kelly and the research and all the different ideas that are being communicated at the college. You guys exactly. are entrenched in that and involved in that and you know a lot about it. So having that asset as you walk into a new place is going to be massive. Yeah. Just to be there as a pair of fresh eyes. I mean, even with Adam, who's still a, you know, he's, he hasn't been practicing for a yeah. long time, but that few years difference mm. makes a big difference. It's yeah. just a different learning experience. You guys have been through a lot and a lot of different stuff, which mm. definitely kind of tempers you a little bit different. You're kind mm. of like a new, fresh thing that's never been done before. <laughs> It'll be really kind of interesting to see what you guys end up creating. Yeah, and it's, it's quite refreshing because every time we hear um, Roey come talk to us, mm. it's always those fresh pair of eyes that tell you what you don't know, you know, mm. from that side. Um, and it's just gets you amped and inspired and you're like holy moly i'm gonna de- try these marketing tools you know yeah, <laughs> yeah. but um yeah it's really cool to well and, spe- and speaking of marketing tools i mean all, all you guys obviously see getting involved with in community and that is the greatest way to do it um but what do you guys actually plan to do podcast how do you get podcast <laughs> <laughs> no it doesn't work <laughs> um but, but what, yeah and also what, what is your 
What's your plans? How are you going to get into the market? How are you going to get into the community? Yeah, I think uh, um, it revolves around a couple of things in terms of people who you know mm-hmm. in that community and you, you'd be able to utilize that uh, partnership with them. For example, I think Chris mentioned that he's got a, a few contacts in Wellington where you might want to do a health talk or something like that. Um, just yeah, just little things like that. Sports communities, we're all into our sports, so we want to get into that and start talking to them. Yeah, so just, I and mean, we don't want to go like guns blazing from the beginning, but like just ease into it maybe. Yeah. So. Um, Rowie came in and spoke to us about um, different ideas on how to market yourself going into a place that you don't know anyone. Um, and so what I'm planning on doing is um, doing posting letters into people's mailboxes but with a bar of soap. Um, so you don't know me from a bar of soap, um, but I'm Chelsea and I'm your new chiropractor and stuff like that. So nice. something a little bit quirky and different, I think. And so yeah. to try to get people talking and um, and then have like a, a voucher of some sort in there. and cool. Yeah, so that's kind of what I'm going to start with and then... So you're going to contact a local soap maker? <laughs> yes, <laughs> there's, there's, yeah. there's one go, just yeah. around from the practice actually. I've yeah. already kind of sussed it out, so... <laughs> oh, there you go. That's brilliant. Yeah. Well, and I think that's part of the thing as well. You, you try and support local businesses and yeah, exactly. communities inside of what you're already doing mm. and then you get more people involved. Maybe we can shape it like an atlas. A little so far. And everyone's like, why have I got this bit of bone? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do I eat it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Myself, um, other than like the, the, the typical screenings and things um, that I think we both have lined up for the first couple of months, um, I really do want to immerse myself in the community in terms of uh, I want to get back into my sport. So I, I, I used to do trampolining and I quit that before I started the college because everyone was telling me it was going to be too hard to do this and a part-time job and keep up your sport. Uh, and so that's something I really miss and I think that would be a great opportunity to um, give back a little bit. So I'm going to, I'm going to, get, I'm going to do that. Uh, and then, yeah, I've got some, um, some people that I know in the Sofitel uh, in the CBD, which is like just next to the, the practice, which I think will be quite, quite neat. Nice. Um, so I'm going to be doing that. Uh, but other than that, just, just letting people know who I am and, and what I do. Uh, and everything, because, you know, exploring a new city, you know, when I get my hair cut, this is who I am, this is what I do, you know, when mm. I try and find <laughs> a grocery and try and make some food, uh, it'll, be the sa- it'll, be, it'll be the same thing, uh, and then and I'll be that poor guy that's just, over. yeah. You tell the fire guys, yeah, sorry, <laughs> yes, yeah. I burned down the house, but I'm a chiropractor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, sweet, you know, um, I'll be that guy that's just constantly buying loaves of bread and butter, because uh, that's all I can do. So the bakery. And, yeah. and they'll know who I am, so yeah. it's, right. yeah, it's, it's. And we'll see how brave I am. And I want to do health talks. Yeah. Um, that's kind of like my goal. I want to get that, that communication up. Um, we'll see how successful those are. Um, talking to people, it's, it's hit or miss. Some people, you know, they're, they're fantastic. You know, they, they get the three or four people out of the 50 rather than having to speak to each individually. Um, so I'll try, try that. Um, and I'm actually really excited for that. I've actually got some ideas. And I'm already starting to write stuff. And, but that's, that's my plan. Yeah, because when you, you do... Fair bit of health talks, right? So, do you find any essential things, components of that, that you find quite successful with them, or record yourself and go yeah. through that awful, horrible process of listening <laughs> to yourself speak? Right, yeah. we're gonna do that in a moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. You, you guys listen to this. It's, it's, and just do it. You just have to do it, do it, do it. It's like practice. It's like anything. You, you get better and better at it the more you do it. And, um, yeah, there's definitely, definitely a couple of things that I recommend. So, always, if you talk. If you talk with people who have had success, and it sounds like all of you guys, what your strength is, is your honesty and your ability to actually be very present with a patient. And they can feel that they pick up mm. on that. Um, so the thing you need to use to strengthen that is speak passionately and authentically about what you believe in. Right. And it doesn't matter what you say, because people feel that. They get it. They go, wow, this person is really excited about what they say. Mm. And that makes me excited. So yeah. I want to get involved. And I've never heard of this chiropractic thing, or I have, and I've had a negative experience in the past, or someone around me has, but this person seems new and different and exciting, and I want to get involved with them. Yeah. Um, so that's been definitely the biggest thing for me, and uh, being relentless. <laughs> 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 just, just like, if you've ever listened to Will Smith and what he talks about, it's his talent, that's my talent, is just dogged, determined, unrelenting ability to just keep going. To have someone say no, to mess it up really, really badly, to not be successful and still go, oh, oh there's tomorrow. Yeah. And I'll mm-hmm. do it again. And I'll do it better. And watch me get great. 
Because here I come. And is that a nature thing, or is that something you've picked up along the way? Uh, a little bit of both. Mm. A little bit of both. Um, do, uh, yeah, it's, it's, I think that's what you find out. You, f- you find out kind of what are, what are the things that you're kind of good at, and then how can I refine those and get them better. better. Um, so yeah, that's, I mean, that's always been the thing. I've never been the smartest guy. I've never been the most attractive guy. I've never been the most, you know, out there guy, sporty guy, or whatever guy, but I'm the guy who's always there. Okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm the guy who's very, very committed, and if I say I'm going to do something, you see. <laughs> <laughs> and here we are. Um, but yeah, definitely. And yeah, another really good trick if you want to do health talks is video yourself. So literally, like honestly, get your phone out and say, hey, so I read this piece of research and they said this. And then you talk about it and then you watch it. And you watch what you look like when you talk about chiropractic related topics. Because right? in your own mind, you sound really good. <laughs> but then you watch it back and you're like, oh, I've got this weird kind of tick thing. And when I say something that I'm not super confident about, oh yeah, I notice that I always put my head down. And people will pick up on that. So it's those little kind of body language things that you'll notice. And it's you don't get that as much from your friends around you because they mm. think you're amazing. <laughs> they won't sell you negative stuff. But you, you tend to be more harder and um, yeah, you're picking yourself a little bit more. So that's why. Yeah, that, so that's what I did for the longest time. Is I would do health talks. I'd record myself in the health talk. I would plug it into the car and listen to myself speak on the way to work, which is <laughs> maybe not the best thing. <laughs> I did it and kind of... Um, You work on it. You you work on your idea and the best thing is tell stories. People love stories. People love stories in different ones. So you can speak about yourself, which is amazing. You can speak about others. People love patient stories um, and they can get involved with that. And that's the the best way to do it. You try and go from, try and go from like a big concept to a little concept and then a big concept. So an example of that is this, this is me just coming off the fly coming up with a concept for someone, um, so say you are talking to surf dog people, and it's a hotel and you're trying to get in there in hospitality, and how do you create an environment for people who work in hospitality to be greater and better than they are today, and how can chiropractic help them? So let's take something that's super common with people is stress. So you stress out at work and you've got really big long hours, how do you work on it better? Well, I find in my practice a lot of people come and see me because they are overworked, they're stressed in, stressed in their lives, and it means that it's affecting them in a lot of different areas. So, you know, they're not really, you know, striving and work very hard, they, they're feeling a little bit stuck, their relationship's not exactly what they want, and they're kind of are questioning life a little bit. Is this the right place for me? Am I in the right space? Should I be doing something more? And they're asking these really, really big questions of themselves. Mm-hmm. Like, for example, I had one of my patients come in, Sophie, and she came in two weeks ago, on a Monday morning, actually. And she was having a really, really hard time of it. So it's obviously Monday, she's heading on to work. This is first thing in the morning, 7 a.m. I'm kind of blurry-eyed, she's kind of blurry-eyed, <laughs> but we're getting into it. And, you know, check her, find that her atlas, so the bone at the top of her spine, really, really subluxated. There's a real, you know, miscommunication up there that's stopping her, really kind of expressing her innate. It's stopping her have that energy and that vitality for life that I know that she wants. So we're checking her, we find that, I let her know that that's what's going on and I adjust it and we clear out that subluxation. we get her brain and body communicating with each other again and instantly she kind of sits up and goes, huh, yeah, that's, that's way better, something's different, like what is, what is that? Because it's not really a physical thing that she's noticing, it's not like, oh, my pain's gone, or the muscle tension's gone, Sophie's noticing that, wow, that, you know, like I kind of feel different, that's weird. And then she comes back the next day, because she's on quite regular care at the moment, she says, I don't know what it was yesterday, but I had an amazing day. It's like I came in the morning, I was feeling kind of blurry, I don't know you were, you were too, but that adjustment was different. Like I went to work that day and I felt really excited and I spoke with the customers who were coming into me and they had an amazing time and I got this amazing referral from this American guy who'd come over to visit the hotel and he told my boss how amazing it was and how, you know, how he's got amazing stuff and my boss ended up giving me a promotion. And that's what carpet is about. That's been damn good at this adjustment. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry, to my practice. Yeah, we'd always sign up. Like. So, so how, can you, how can you create a story like that? Because then people kind of go, oh, that's interesting. I want that. Yeah. Mm. And then they'll come and see. Does that always just come from experience, though? Or is that something that you... No, I made that shit up. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, no, that's Sophie. Just made up. I, I may have a conversation like that with a patient before. I don't know. It doesn't matter, but it doesn't matter because it's you, you create you create something big. So big idea is everyone wants to have a greater life than they do right now. Mm. That's being human, right? So you, you create that connection with someone. I want a better life than I have right now. I know you want that too. 
well, here's an example of a person who wanted that as well, and I helped them through that. And what they achieved from this was something big and great because their life was better. Yeah. So you go big, small stories, what's the name, the time, how you guys felt, and then you go big ones. And you just cater it to the, uh, the audience in terms yeah. of if they're like from the bank or the hotel or whatever. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. So you just make a match. So yeah, and, and the best thing is if you can find stories from your life. Mm. So what I do is I go around and if something kind of goes, oh, yeah, that, that kind of, I don't know if you've had this yet, but you kind of have this moment in your life where something just kind of feels aligned. You're like, wow, yeah, that's a, that's kind of an important thing. That person that, that, that person that says something really profound or that amazing experience with a patient or that time that I was in coaching football and the dad on the other team was constantly yelling this kid's name, Kedar, 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 the entire match. And I thought, that's crazy. And why is this dad so angry with his son for not playing football the way that he wants him to yeah. and if i knew that guy and i could get him in as a patient would that change the way that his that guy's relationship was with his son and how would that change his son's life growing up so it's those kind of moments in your life where you go hmm and you write that shit down wow yeah and then you come back to it later in your life and you go oh yeah that would go really good in this talk that i'm <laughs> <laughs> um and then, then you kind of throw it in so yeah i have i have a few different talks that i kind of cycle through so I have like the same one so I have a stress talk I have an old person talk and I have a chiropractic talk kind of general chiropractic stuff um, and depending on who my audience is that talk comes out and it's done mm. cool so yeah, yeah. so have fun yeah, so the homework just... doesn't stop no 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 no, no, no. <laughs> new, new and it stops and you constantly yeah fear I'm crap can't do it not good enough want to be better um, and yeah and then you have like a week like I had last week which was Amazing. Saw a bunch of people and adjusting was on fire and everyone was having a great time and referrals were coming in and it was just got the greatest. And I loved it. I loved doing like that. But the week before it was quiet. <laughs> <laughs> My adjusting was bad. And it was like, oh, see, it's, I don't know, it just, it's practice, it's practice. There's ups and downs and, and early practice is, it's not easy because you just haven't been doing it for long enough. Mm. Um, that's one of those things. But if you, I, what I wanted to talk with you guys about today is, you know, where are you at? I wanted to kind of capture a moment of time because then I'll get you back on here in yeah. six months, a year, whenever, um, and ask, how was it? What did you do? Did you did you achieve what you set up yeah. to achieve? Would you say your strengths are still the same? Have they changed? What's going on? It's a scary thought. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> yeah, if I if I talk to myself ten months ago, it'd be very different. Very very different. Which is cool. That's fine. And now you've got it recorded. Yeah, yeah it's immortalized <laughs> on, on the internet now. So. That's, that's right. It never goes away. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, until you contact me and you're like, Ben, please delete it. There you go. Done. Oh, is that easy? <laughs> no, I don't know. It's my friends download it. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Like, edit stuff over top 10 over 20. <laughs> it hasn't happened yet, but I'm sure someone will. But it's cool. Because what are you guys, um, what are you looking forward to the most? Just being a chiropractor. Yeah, man. It's it's so good. It's, yeah, it's been a long oh, time it's coming. So good. You know, um, I just can't wait till it just can take up all of my energy. Because at the moment we're we're kind of full time chiropractors. Well, in my eyes, anyway, full time chiropractors, full time students. Mm-hmm. You know, some people are working part time jobs as well to just to get through. Um, it's like you dabble in a lot of things. Yeah, you know, and, but it, each thing that you dabble in requires a hundred percent of your energy. Mm-hmm. Um, so. You know, I come home and I am absolutely exhausted and I'm looking forward to being exhausted, but knowing that all of my energy went into the one thing that I want to do for the rest of my life. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I'm, yeah, that's probably the thing I'm most excited for, you know. Moment. I so resonate with that. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's exactly where I was when I was in, you know, December last year, is I just can't wait to just do this one thing that I'm really excited for. Yeah. And not have all my interests divided into so many different areas. And it's, of course. So glorious. <laughs> well, because people ask, you know, uh, other students or um, the CAs or even lecturers, you know, they're like, you know, are you excited because you're almost leaving? And it's, and I, I say no, hmm. because I'm not excited to leave. Hmm. Uh, and then I sort of like, it's sort of, it's like a pattern interrupt for me. I sort of sit back and I'm like, why am I not excited? <laughs> it's because that's not what I'm excited for. Yeah. Because uh, I got asked that question so many times. We kind of had a, a sort of like a, almost like a leaving thing from like the school last night. It was like a happy hour where we all got to come together and sort of, you know, people got to chat about, you know, us leaving and yeah, this is so great. Nice. Every, that was just the question I was asked every time, you know, every person, new person I saw. Uh, and so I came home and I was like, man, why am I not excited? And it's just because I've really enjoyed my time 
uh, yeah. at the college. And so I'm, I'm sad to leave, but I'm excited to, to see what comes. Mm. So that's, that's kind of where I'm at. That's awesome. Yeah. Excited for a new era. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> is it beginning something new? Yeah. I think the, the cool thing about chiropractic is you can bring chiropractic to a lot of your interests. So the fact that we spend a lot of time at our part-time jobs or our sports or anything, but we can bring chiropractic to that and then just utilize that and breathe and sleep, you know, and just engulf ourselves with chiropractic and the love for it. So, yeah, that's it's something funny how really... it takes over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's kind of, it just becomes part of who you are. You never yeah. stop. Yeah. Well, that's the thing, like, we're talking to people, like, eventually it just leads to what you do. Like, you know, chiropractic yeah. can be the end topic. Yeah. Like, I don't know if that's just for me, but... Oh, sorry, but... did you want to talk about chiropractic? Oh, perfect, yeah, that's what yeah, I want to yeah, talk about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Funny story. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but family, friends, you know, I'm like, yeah, you should get checked. Like, what, yeah. what are you doing? <laughs> but it's one of those things. It's like when you have a cool experience, like when you see a cool movie. Yeah. What do you want to talk about? Like, I want to talk about the cool movie. It's like, yeah. oh my God, I found this amazing thing, which reconnects me with the universe or however you want to say it. Like, why would you want that? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. For me, like, I don't know if it's necessarily answering the question, but I always have this picture in my head of me just in, in a, obviously, a room, like adjusting room, that thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, just... As opposed to, like, a non-room. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and just checking someone and just, like, laughter laughter's just kind of roaring from the room yeah. and I think that's kind of what I'm kind of envisioning and I get that a couple of times and like when we're at the clinic now or center now. <laughs> just edit that up yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, just bleep it <laughs> but um yeah I can't wait for that to just be a constant thing throughout the whole day um yeah but I I do under kind of I do understand what Chris was saying, like. But I am still excited to leave, but excited to leave because I know I'm starting a new area, mm. and yeah, just I feel like I'm ready mm. for that next step. So I feel like we've at the college we've we've been given a lot of tools and resources, and we've all kind of taken what we wanted from it, and. We had business class and just everyone doing their presentations and it's so interesting. Like we had Rochelle tell us that, um, which was completely accurate, we're all taught the same thing, but everyone's interpretations and everyone's visions and stuff, they're so dramatically different. And yeah, so it's, I'm interested to see what everyone else will do as well because I think there'll be a massive spread over what will happen. So yeah. And the thing is with our class as well is everyone's just shooting off in every direction. I'm sure that yeah. was the same for you. Um, but there's very few people staying in Auckland. Mm. Um, people are just shooting off everywhere. A couple of people are staying at the at the college um, to to work, which is which is oh, cool. cool. Nice. Um, and then some people but just are they heading into like recruiting or teaching? Or what? Uh, one, uh, as far as I'm aware, we're recruiting then uh, Dak Bar as well. So there's oh, going nice. to be another another will lead. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah. be good. Well, I, think, I think that's really important. Yeah, it's good. I'm glad someone is. And so it's, like, it's, it's just crazy to think that, you know, next year everyone's going to be so different mm. uh, and hopefully doing what they want to do. Mm -hmm. um, but that's, that's another reason that's sad is because we've gone through this with the support network. Yeah. Uh, and then we're all going to be on our own or with someone in a city yeah, that we don't yeah. know anyone or whatever it might be. Um, and you can't just turn to your, to your neighbor and be like, hey, when's the next test? Or yeah. it's today. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. You know, so... <laughs> Just and cramming. The really awesome thing is, there is one. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to switch. Which is really weird. Like, it took me a couple of months to get over that. Like, that kind of feeling of... I, I should be doing something, yeah. <laughs> yeah like, isn't it like a textbook I need to be reading? Yeah. Or like, something I need to, like, an assignment? Or, yeah. I think that's why um, seminars and Lyceum are going to be really good. Because mm. everyone's just going to meet up and have a nice mm. catch-up. Mm. You know, especially yeah. with the people who have just spread out. Um, yeah, you... Was this your first Lyceum this year that you were out of practice and then... All came back to you. So how was that? Yeah, was that? It was awesome, but, but not that many from my year yeah. over there. Mm -hmm. um, so it was amazing to reconnect and, and catch up with people and um, yeah, you know, and just see faces that you hadn't seen yeah. in a really really long time. And it was wonderful, and it, it is really really weird to kind of graduate and go off and do your own thing and then be kind of alone. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Has it flown by though? Yeah. Yeah. You rock and roll. Yeah. 
It was a great show. Thanks for coming and hanging out. Yeah, of Did course. a good job. Thanks so much for seeing Bye, Chelsea. All right. <laughs> See you later, guys. See you later. Thanks for later. At this point, Chelsea had to leave as she had to go pick up a friend from the airport. Oh, thank goodness she's got no. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think yeah, that is uh, that, that was definitely the biggest thing that I noticed the first few weeks out was as soon as I got over that fear of oh my god I suck and I can't adjust anyone is man I don't know what my friends are up to. Mm. Um, right. Yeah, because you just get kind of stuck in that mindset of well now I'm in practice and this is what I do now. And I mean, you are really, really excited about it because I'm like, yes, I can pay all my attention to this. Um, but yeah, then I think you do miss out on that, which is why definitely I would get more involved in my community and, right. and do more things. And I finally got around to doing that. And I you know, coach football again, which is really fun. And I just got involved in different community events. Mm-hmm. And definitely something that worked really well for me is instead of just going and doing one screening or one health talk at a place, you set up a relationship where you'll come back three to four times a year. Right. And you say, in every three months, we come in and we do a different, you know, this is our marketing cycle for the year. These are the different presentations that we're doing. This can fit in with your HR health promotional department. Mm-hmm. And then away you go. And then you become the person and then you keep coming back. And that means that the first time you go on, pretty much no one comes to see you because they don't know who you are. <laughs> Second time, they're like, oh, yeah, you're that guy. And you said that stuff and I was really interested. And now <laughs> I want to come in as a patient. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's what's made my practice successful this year so far is literally getting involved in one business um, and having a you know I went in there three times and on the second and third time that's when everyone started coming in cool um, yeah. and now most of the people in the company well not most of the people but a large number come to see me now so you pre-frame that before you approach them in terms of you want to be there for a couple times a, m- a year or was that something that you realized after the first uh, one that no, maybe that's, you to so the, the first one was always kind of like a once off just right. to see how the relationship was um, and then once I found out hey this is a cool place with cool. interesting yeah. people that I, I actually want to come back to because some some of them I've gone and, and spoken with or, or um, you know done screening at or whatever and I've gone yeah this isn't an organisation that I'm going to gel with um, they're not really focused on health the people here are kind of um, you know not at that stage in their life it's very kind mm. of depressing down environment so I'm not going to be a good fit here this isn't going to match because kind of not be a guy <laughs> and it sucks going to those places and be like you should love life and they're like we had our work <laughs> yeah. okay we're not going to work together um, so yeah there's been a few places like that which I've just gone no um, but then other places who I've been like yep this is really cool this is nice and fit and then afterwards got in contact with them and said look we do multiple promotions a year uh, would you be interested in being involved in the next one it's going to happen in two three months time and I'll contact you at the time cool. and so far everyone that I've done that with has said yep sounds great cool. um, and then you seen them the next thing so like the first thing that I did was like a lunch talk um, the second one was a screening the next one was like a movement class um, and you, know, you just kind of chat with people because that's the thing that I think it will be changing but at the moment that we lack uh, you know we come out um, with the clinical knowledge the critical thinking the, the technic- t- technical application but the ability to immerse yourself and to, to screen well and that's something that we've had to work on ourselves uh, and then at the time, you know, a lot of us were too scared to ask for help. So we've kind of done our own thing and whether it's become successful or not, um, most people go, oh, I hate screenings now because the screenings that they attempted didn't, didn't work or oh, health talks don't work or whatever that might be. So it's going to be interesting to try and up that skill uh, in terms of Definitely. bringing people in and bringing them into your sort of your scope and your, your view. Definitely. And I... I at least what I've experienced so far is no one has the right answer. You just you have to try. <laughs> Good. You have to try and just figure it out. Yeah. No one knows. I mean, people have figured out what works for them in the past. I mean, at least where my practice is, it's been there for 20 years and Kent doesn't have to do any marketing anymore. It's yeah. all referral based. He's got a few new patients who come in every week because he's been there for yonks and they're yeah. referred him by other people and that's all he needs to maintain his practice where it is and he's very comfortable sitting there. Um, whereas I obviously want to grow my practice right. so um, that was definitely something for me at the beginning of this year because and I'm just kind of curious about you guys what, what situation you're heading into because this might be something you can avoid um, all those at home listening to this um, is the practice had to shift to allow me to come in so the practice was used to just having one chiropractor you know once one or two CAs on a shift and it just floated like that and then having another personality in there and another person there having to share the space and the rooms and driving for new patients to grow the practice when the practice didn't really need to grow or want to grow based on the current systems that right. were there. 
Um, so then you had to kind of, I was the driving force behind it for a long time to say, look, we're ready, I'm ready, let's make this happen. And it's just been months and months and months of just slowly, slowly, slowly building and, and getting everyone used to each other, I guess. Um, so what, with what you're about to head into, is there already an associate position there that you're going to fill? Are you growing it? Has the practice got overflow that you're going to take over? What's the what to do? Well, there is overflow, as far as I'm aware. Um, so that will be beneficial. With That's McDad and I both going in. Important. Yeah. Mm. Helps. yeah. I'm sure it does. <laughs> Um, but with Mick, Dad and I both going in, obviously, that's um, it's going to be less than, obviously, if there was just one of us. Sure. But I think that's that's a good thing in a way, that's fine. Um, because I'm, I want to know how to build a practice. Uh, and it's something that I'm really interested in as well, um, building that, that practice, potentially in the CBD. So I think there's definitely, there's room to grow, there's massive room to grow. Uh, but then you don't know until you know. So, yeah, when we get there, I think that's when we'll figure out what changes might need to happen. Because um, what sort of systems and processes do they have in place so far? Yeah, so they have a couple of associates already okay, with cool. them. And the fact that I think they were looking for two associates means that they want to grow. Yeah. So they're going to have systems ready in order to get that flow in. Cool. Um, hopefully. <laughs> Touch wood. Yeah. No, no, but I'm sure like since, since what we've observed, it's ex- excellent in terms of its systems and its education. So it's just a matter mm-hmm. of um, being supported through getting people in. And then just working on from that, right? And any change is going to be hard, um, not just for us. I'm sure for the other practitioners. Um, but everyone has to adapt. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Mm. Um, so I'm not expecting it to, you know, in a best case scenario, it's going to be, you know, seamless. Um, I'm sure it won't be, but um, I think that's going to be part of the fun and part of the the learning. Um, but it's. But we have drive, so we have like a big vision. To, yeah. You know, in the first year, we want to be seeing how many people. You know, want to be like high volume eventually, and you know, just just loving it. But so those fresh pair of eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fresh pair of eyes. <laughs> feels good. Yeah, to it. No, keep it going because it, it can happen. That's mm. the thing. It's it is very much possible. And the more that you have in your control, the better. Yeah. So if you can, if you have more flexibility and freedom about your working hours, if you have more flexibility and freedom around how you book patients in and where they get booked in, um, that makes a really, really big difference. Okay. Um, so if yeah, if if you can have that. Because it means that you can then set up your practice and control it in a way that matches you. Um, so if, yeah, again, this is me speaking from experience. If I could do it again, I would want more of that control. Because um, then I could, yeah, just, it, it would just represent me better. And I know that I know that then I would do better work because I was there and on and ready to go. Right. Uh, rather than, you know, at the beginning of the year, for example, doing 10 hour shifts and seeing no one. Right. And just being like, this is the worst. Better to be there for one shift and give 100% of your effort yeah, then over multiple, be, be, there five, be there for five hours, be like, I'm here, I'm ready to go. And exactly. for the other five hours of the day, I'm out doing other stuff. And there was the freedom to do that to an extent, but it's like, you, yeah, you're kind of away from the practice and it's just, yeah, it was just, it was okay, but it just, it was like, you, you know, these are your hours that you need to be here. Is that dynamic different with the kind of contract that you have, though, like in terms of employee, I think, versus contractor versus, yep. is that freedom a bit more with a contractor versus employee? Is that how it works? Or it completely depends how the... How it goes, yeah. okay. Yeah. 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 And, well, and the relationship that you have with your primary. Right. Um, so, I mean, Kent's fantastic mm. and super, super open to any ideas that I have and share and has been very much a yes kind of guy. Been like, oh, you want to do that? Yeah, go for it. It's cool. Oh, you want to yeah. do that? Yeah, go for it. Um, so, that I've been very, very fortunate in that regard. Yeah. But, yeah, th- I mean, things like working hours and all that kind of stuff, it's, that was set in the contract. Right. Um, so until all that changes, that's, that is what it is. So because, have you guys signed contracts yet? Yes. Yeah, nice. yeah sweet. So you, then you know what all the requirements are and what's there and what you do. Yep. Sweet. It's good. And do you think that the, because uh, you're an employee, yep. I understand, um, do you think that there might be a shift in the profession towards that? Or do you think I it's going to so. say? Okay. Uh, I, well, I mean, I don't know. I don't know, it's, it's been so common, I mean, effectively, independent contractors, as carpenters, if you took it to court, you're employees anyway, because you're <laughs> not taking your contract into any other business, you're just at one place, they're providing all of the equipment, you're not bringing equipment to that place, apart from maybe an activator or your your kid or whatever, so, like, if you took it to court, you would be an employee, um, but I think the structure of me being on a salary, definitely first year out, takes away a lot of that pressure. Yeah. Because if you get to the end of the year and wash it up, um, yes, I probably made a little bit more than what I've got paid in terms of the salary. But there were weeks there where I definitely would have been very short. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's kind of 
it's definitely even itself out. If you look at it over a year, sure. it's definitely even itself out. And it's meant that I can make decisions because I know that, that um, those finances are coming in. Like yeah. the beautiful apartment I'm living in now. Yeah. Um, I know that I can finance this without freaking out going, oh my God, I only saw 10 people this week. I don't have enough money to pay rent. Mm. Um, which is the case for some of the chiropractors who are an independent contractor type relationship. Mm. So I don't know. I, th I think there's definite um, benefits and drawbacks to either one and I think it, it's it's completely up to you you chat with your carpenter and the office that you're heading into and, and what you're going to be walking into and that's going to give you the best indicator um, so for me I was walking into a practice that didn't have overflow that was starting from scratch in a associate position um, so being on a salary definitely made sense yeah because that's kind of an experiment and we both Kent and I didn't know how is this going to take off is this going to take off with massive boom and be amazing straight away or is this going to be a slow steady kind of grind and get a little bit busier yeah. and that's what's been mm -hmm. this has been slow and steady do, 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 just getting busier and busier as you go through the year which is not quite what i wanted but still at the same time i've learned heaps and i would do it again yeah yeah because the, the, there's lessons that you learned and i think um yeah well i mean you can't ask the question so i'll be curious to hear what you guys think about it what's what for you guys do you reckon is the future of car credit where do you think it's here? In terms of... Mate, let's make it broad. Let's have a chat. It's going to say good. All right. Um, where are we going? Where's this ship going? I think more and more people are turning uh, switched on to self-educating. So okay. the fact that chiropractic really focuses on that um, and that Shoot. ability to open that discussion with a patient as opposed to just telling you this is what you need to do and, and, you, and, this is, and, and there's no reason behind it. It's just because this is why I said so. So I think the fact that we open discussions with them is going to switch a lot more people on. And there's been another health shift towards more holistic and vitalistic health mm -hmm. uh, just in the last couple of years. And that's what we've always prided ourselves on. So I think it's been a long time coming, but we've finally been that, that sort of that rudder that's steering the ship now. Um, but then it's, it's hard to say because we have, been, we have been students. So we haven't experienced you know, what it's really like. We've only experienced the patients that we've seen. Um, in terms of, like I, I've only done a few ACC um, and they haven't lasted too long because they sort of get their results and then, they've, and then they're gone. Yeah. Um, but the rest of my practice has been very much built on referral um, and it's just the fact that you just, you just say, this is what chiropractic is, are you interested? And if it's no, then they're not the right, right for you. And that's kind of the mentality that I've always had. And so if I think, if I can continue that, then that's, that's where I want the practice to go to make, be, make sure people can play the way they want to play and not have to worry, um, you know, not be focused on the symptoms. And I think that's where it's heading. Yeah, well, I agree completely with that. But um, we also hear from a lot of, because we get a lot of guest speakers come to our classes now, especially in fourth year, um, that say that we're extremely lucky to be here in New Zealand because it's so vitalistic in, in terms of what they've experienced outside. So that's really cool. And I think um, the more of us that kind of speak that truth will help the profession a lot. And um, Dr. Pritchard, uh, Lyceum also says something real interesting in terms of a lot of people are shifting towards that holistic sort of side of care, but chiropractors aren't doing their job in terms of, you know, reaching out to them. So I think we saw like a real minuscule amount of those people. Yeah. So, um, yeah, he was just well, saying... The, the stats were 23 point something percent of yeah. the population are heading away from what would be quote unquote... Yeah. Allopathic care. The, a quarter of the population is hitting away. Yeah. And how many came to see us? Exactly. The same. <laughs> like it didn't grow for us. Yeah. yeah. Which is, for me, just horrifying. Exactly. So we need to work as a profession in terms of being able to sing that song better. That's, I think you used that term. Yeah. Well, and I mean, we've, this has definitely been a theme of this whole conversation is marketing. Yeah. How do you market yourself and how do you market yourself as a chiropractor? And this discussion here definitely makes me very optimistic about the future of chiropractic. Because you guys talk about being authentic and you talk about you know the natural power of the body to heal and you talk about really wanting to engage with people on a personal level and help them and i think that's a wonderful thing and that's the future of chiropractic not saying look i'm a back pain specialist exactly. and come see me for your sciatica or your headaches or whatever um, but if you look at the marketing that's out there now unfortunately that's still what that is mm. um, it's still symptom based a lot of websites have that sort of thing yeah, and, and we're extremely lucky now to be having the Australian Chiropractic College come up soon. Um, yeah. I think in Adelaide, right? Yeah, that would be massive. Yeah, and it's just like another NZCC over there. So <laughs> that's going to be good for Australia because we know what kind of state they're in at the moment. Um, 
but yeah, no, exciting times hopefully. Super, super exciting times. Yeah. But I, I definitely think, well, maybe I'm a little bit biased, but I definitely think we're on the right side of things. Yeah. We just oh, let's hope, eh? <laughs> yeah, we just need people to actually know. Um, and I, I think, yeah, it's really exciting to hear you guys starting up your own thing. I think you guys will be awesome down the line with them. Okay. And I think having that, having that company and kind of already having developed the relationship and the friendship that you guys have from college and then take that to a new city and a new community is going to be really compelling. I think it'll be really awesome and, and to actually have that support network because you'll be going through similar stuff in yeah. a similar environment and you'll have that understanding of each other I yeah. think will be massive because um, yeah definitely in early practice getting into associate by yourself can be really isolating yeah. and, and really really hard so the fact that you guys don't have that mm. and you're like miles ahead already <laughs> it's brilliant we'll let you it's know really if we're still good. talking and stuff. <laughs> yeah yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> after, after yeah. six months like, yeah. Yeah. What, what's the whole thing like flat out with your friends is either going to go really well or just awful it's in like playing Monopoly eh? yeah yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> don't play Monopoly like, <laughs> this friendship is or <laughs> you landed on what, what is it Queen Street or something oh, like, yeah. four million dollars <sighs> yeah. uh, I think that's the big thing that I, I want to focus on um in terms of just what we've been talking about is to, to not let it slip don't become sort of content with your your patient base mm. um, which I feel a lot of people have done is they've, they've got their you know they've got um, their people and they've become stable and so they've withdrawn from marketing and they've withdrawn from screenings whereas that was educating the community mm. and so now that they've switched on all these people and now they've become content that education stopped and that's why the, the number hasn't changed because we haven't done anything more to, to get those people that are now changing their minds and they're changing, hey, let, let's look at you know something a little bit more aligned with what they want, and then there's no one talking. Um, I don't want to ever stop. I say that now. Yeah, in saying that, though, that's that's cool. But like for some people, their vision might be, I just want to see this many people and do my best to serve them. And then when that's, you know, that number for them is probably, that might be the number they want to see. Mm. Um, I don't think everyone... Um, wants to just you know s- crank it out and get you know no of but, course not no no yeah but um, I think to each their own in that way but definitely on that same same line with you in terms of you know never wanting to just stop at some way and just always trying to strive towards that next that definitely next well, my personal belief is you're either growing or you're shrinking so what study you in are you growing and getting bigger and better and, and becoming better than you were yesterday mm. or have you stopped which is the same thing as dying that's <laughs> yes. that's it for me um, so I look at a lot of practices and I see them stagnating and not growing and not shifting. And yes, you're right, there is this whatever quote-unquote magic number of people that you look after and you feel comfortable with and until you stretch yourself and figure out what that right. is, you just won't know. But when that happens, because you're speaking the truth and involved in your community and being passionate and authentic and excited, more people are going to come towards you. Yeah. So what do you do? Well, your practice grows. If you physically can't see any more people, then you get someone else on board. Mm. And you say, look, I'm too busy. Can you come help me? And then some other chiropractor goes, hell yeah, that sounds great. <laughs> I'll come and hang out. So that, I think that needs to be the future of chiropractic. And instead of going, oh, well, I'm too busy, I can't yeah. see any more people, I'm satisfied in my practice, you bring in other people, you create more community. And you can see that in certain practices. And that's something I, I wanted to kind of talk with you guys about and see, kind of see where where you think about it as kind of graduates heading out. Um, I think that's something that will be really helpful to chiropractors is having some kind of postgraduate system in place. Whether that be if you want to graduate and start your own thing, you have already organized coaches in place for you to approach and work with you as part of a postgraduate program. Or if you're heading into an associate program that there's literally practices around New Zealand or maybe Australia as well um, who are already set up to have associates come in that have systems and processes in place and are ready for associates to flow through. Because if you look at practices like Katie Nash or um, Mount Eden with Simon or there's a few down in Wellington as well or me with Kent, these practices are set up or being set up to handle associates. Yeah. And that's way, way better than a chiropractor going, well, I think I can have an associate, let's try it mm-hmm. and see how that works because I've heard about a few people doing that and it just hasn't worked out well. And it's been really tough for the current chiropractor and the associate to form that relationship and have that not work. The learning experience for both of them, essentially, right? So, oh, massive. Yeah. But if, if there was already something in place, I mean, would do you think that would be good? Yeah, would absolutely. You know? Yeah. Gives you a good um, indication of what you're essentially getting into, you know, mm-hmm. other than being like, you know, you're both out of, 
out of your depth in terms of just you don't know what's what's happening mm-hmm. and, and just making systems up as you go it's a little bit uneasy to definitely yeah i think it gives a little bit of that safety net um you know for me i've been up i've been in school all my life up until this point yeah um so i don't know anything different and to go out um and do that there's no longer that safety net that i just go back to school so having having that support network and knowing that it's you know it's it's almost like that's there Mm. we're quite fortunate because i I feel like there will be a lot of mentoring um well it sounds like i mean if you've already got a couple of associates and a couple of practices Sounds good to me. Yeah. So I think we're, we're fortunate in that regard, um, whereas others might not have that um, no. opportunity or mm. they might think they have and they don't get it. Or over-promised or something Yeah, like you know, that. so yeah. there's a lot of things that, that if, unfortunately, you know, if they're not written in the contract, then they're not necessarily don't have to be um, done. And so having that will be that safety net. Well, I, th- I think the first couple of years when you're out in practice are, are really... Like they, they form a lot of your opinions as you head into practice later mm-hmm. in life. Just like in, you know, when you're like, whatever it is, seven to eight, and you get a whole lot of psychological stuff at the time as you're developing your personality just through puberty, a similar thing happens once you graduate college. Yeah. <laughs> and those kind of ideas and opinions that you form at that time really carry on with you into later life. How, how do you practice? How do you see the chiropractic environment? What do you do about it? And if you can create an environment that's actually really conducive to creating amazing chiropractors because you guys are graduating with an incredible set of skills but you don't have business stuff yet or at least i didn't so how do you market yourself effectively how do you get involved in the community and if there's already a system set up for that so that's what i'm trying to create my practices the next person who comes through is here's the marketing plan here's the 10 businesses that we visit four times a year and these are the different things that they enjoy and for you to talk about and it's just copy paste repeat create that relationship talk with people they love it, we love it, and everything's there for you to just learn and do, rather than going, I don't know, yeah. I'm going to go talk to these people and see how it goes. Yeah. Which obviously is, is great and should be done, but if you already have something in place that you know is stable and steady and you can do and you can create success from, I think will really, really help a lot of chiropractors not be as disillusioned and have a lot more skills. Um, because it's different, it's hard when you start out. Yeah, I think that's that's one of the biggest things that um, helped me choose where I wanted to go, is because that all those systems were there, you know, and the mentorship and the proven track record of you know how it's done mm-hmm. is something that I was getting down in Wellington and the men- yeah, so I was definitely a no-brainer towards that end in mm-hmm. period. Yeah, I'm sort of in two minds to be honest. Yeah. Um, I think that the, the fact that we're getting mentoring is massive. I think that's awesome, but I don't know what it was. It just I got this. I got you know the. The opportunity in Wellington, it was the first thing that I saw. And everyone said, don't jump at the first thing. And so I sat on it and I sat on it and I sat on it. Um, and everyone knew that I was doing it. You know, um, parents knew it, girlfriend knew it, um, principal chiropractor knew it, all my friends knew it. And I just didn't, I just hadn't done it. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know what it was. And it just, I, it was just so right that it, I just couldn't say yes, you know. Hmm. Um, and then as soon as I did that, it, it was like a relief. And so in that regard... I feel like the mentoring aspect of that was huge, um, to saying yes, uh, and I don't know what the, the other half was. I'll tell you when I figure it out, when I come back in a year's yeah. time. <laughs> so, so. Well, I, I'm, I'm going to be having a very interesting discussion with um, Steve Bowers about his thing that he's doing down in Wellington. And I think something that a lot of people talk about is the mentoring, mentoring, you want mentoring, you want that kind of practice, you don't need it. You guys know a lot. What, what you need is feedback. Does right. this work or does this not work? And having someone who's tried it already to give you some kind of feedback to bounce off of. Yeah. And then you can either listen to them or not. Because I've definitely done that. I've said, look, Kent, I'm thinking about doing this. And he's like, well, that sucks because of these reasons. I'm like, that's fine. I'm doing it anyway. <laughs> and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but, it's, but it's still having that feedback. That's all you need. You don't necessarily need mentorship as in, right. hey, you should be doing this and that. Because you, you know it. You guys mm-hmm. know yourselves by now. You know your strengths. You know your weaknesses. You know what you can do. So you don't need, quote, unquote, mentorship. But you do need some, well, I believe, that as an early graduate, some form of structure, right. some form of support is, is really important. And that's why your first associate or whatever you, you get into it immediately after college is so important for you to grow, I think. So. I think. I think it does. I think it really sets the tone in mm. a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, so, because, I, I mean, my, my idea is, well, how can, how can we make this the greatest profession in the world? And how can we share this message with everyone? So, because it's like, well, why wouldn't you see a chiropractor? 
Yeah. Why would you spend your life, well, like one second subluxated? That just is awful. Like, why would you? But most people just do. And that sucks. And I don't know why. <laughs> but they don't know it's, about it. Yeah. 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 It's, it's awesome when um, a patient walks in and they're like, I need to be here. And you're like, okay, you know, yeah. you sort of wave it off, but then I, you take the time to think, you know, oh, why? And they go, oh, I feel different, or I just something that I know I, I stopped noticing has now come back or whether that's pain or not or you know and then they're just they're like I just don't feel like I do when I usually leave and all the chiropractic students that you know I've spoken to have that you know they can literally tell you exactly what level subluxated because <laughs> you know yeah. um, and when a patient gets to that level it's, it's kind of cool um, you know I look after a, I no longer I've transferred but I used to look after a guy who's been there since for nine years at the chiropractic centre um, and I don't like a patient to dictate what I, what I uh, choose to adjust or not, but man, he, he tells me this level, this level, this level, and you go, all right, lie down and see what's going on. <laughs> and it's it's those three levels, and you're thinking, oh my God, I can't adjust those. It's cold. <laughs> I want to do something you else. Know? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm looking, yeah, and I, I want, I really strive for that kind of awareness in all my, in all my people, because that means in terms of communication, they're going to be uh, educating and communicating with their friends yeah. when something similar pops up in their life. So I think that level of awareness is, is something I want to strive for. Yeah, and no, I've had a similar case with one of my patients where she initially came in for like headaches and neck pain and stuff. And now, I don't know, 40 visits later, she's coming in because she has an exam next week and she wants to be less subluxated for it. Yeah. So I'm like, holy moly, this person gets it. Yeah. You know, and she's using terms like, I think there's increased muscle tone on the right. I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> sure, I wrote my soap notes yeah. for me. Yeah. Goddamn car students. Yeah, <laughs> not even a car student though. Like, it's yeah. just like, yeah. Just a, yeah, it's yeah. awesome to see that. That when, is really awesome. That, that's, I mean, that's my favorite when people get it. Yeah. They get it. They get the big idea. That, that, like for me, that's the that's the greatest adjustment I can ever do. Is in the one above that does. It's like you know, you, when someone gets the big idea, yeah. they go, oh, yeah, my life can be greater than it is now. And you can help me do that. Awesome. Let's get started. And unfortunately, you don't, you don't in my experience anyway, you don't hear those stories until you're leaving. Um, a lot of a lot of people it's that so are, funny right yeah. honestly I could have told me this six months yeah, ago I know, it would have really helped my confidence <laughs> I was down in the slums I thought it was crap and yeah. now you tell me that you know, I've changed your life or whatever it is but just most of the people that have come to speak to us this year um, have been like yeah it's funny when you leave that's when all the, the stories come out of the cracks and suddenly they're like no I need to see you you know you haven't seen them in a couple of months and now they're like nah book them for the next three weeks <laughs> um, and it's just you know you, you you don't realize it because they either get results and then they'll, they'll talk about their friends. You get referrals from them, but they don't say explicitly, oh my gosh, you changed this or you changed that. And so coming to the end of it, that's what's saddening. Yeah. Is you, you, you're like, all these things that you did months ago, you know, years ago, are coming back to you and you're like, oh, I didn't realize I had that, uh, that effect. Hmm. Goodbye. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. A, it's, it's interesting. Definitely. But at the same time, I, I think that's wonderful. Oh, oh, that's, that's, what it's, that's what it's kind of about the, yeah. the fact that you've been able to have an influence on this person's life and of they have then made an informed choice themselves saying I don't want to be like the way that I was exactly yeah and it's just going to make us grow in terms of the fact that when we do get into the you know the real world um Bro, you're in the, world. Yeah, was, the uncaged you're already plugged in man. the uncaged world <laughs> now yeah. but um, the fact that what what we do as chiropractors can change people so much yeah. And maybe we had to have that epiphany late in our in our degree, um, when they all start coming out at the end about telling us um, how it affected them. But now we we know that what we do really helps. So it's cool to see. Hmm. Yeah. And it's interesting. Like we've we've been speaking a lot about it, either keeping it at the forefront or writing it down. I kind of wrote down the, the three things I really wanted to get once I became unsupervised. The three things I wanted to work on, uh, and then I had my very last uh, patient come in. So we did the new patient. Um, and he had nothing spinal going on, um, but he had a shoulder dislocation. And so I was like, right, and he had, so my, my three things were um, extremities, <laughs> uh, was communication, uh, and was clinical you know, exper- expertise and thinking. Uh, and I just had to bring all of those together um, to try and figure out what was going on, how I'm going to tell him that I'm going to be adjusting his spine, not his, you know, his shoulder. And, and it was almost like that was put there to be like, let's see if you're ready. Uh, and then coming out of that, you know, and... I was, I was so anxious before going in to see him to say, cool, I'm going to adjust your spine today, even though you've come in with this, you know, dislocated shoulder um, and shoulder instability. 
And then I just, I don't know, I spun it in a way, I stopped thinking. And then at the end, he was telling me how the brain talks to the body and how he's so excited to reconnect and, you know, and I was just, and I can't even remember what I said to him, (laughs) you know, I must have just panic mode. The universe, Um, right? The universe. (laughs) It's flow state. You guys know about flow state, right? I don't think the listeners at home know. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, so uh, it was first kind of described by a guy called Tixit Mahai and how people kind of entered this state of, say, quote unquote ecstasy, where time seemed to slow down or speed up, and you couldn't remember what you did at the time, but afterwards you realized it was some kind of greatness, like you had right. some kind yeah. of connection with something bigger or better than yourself, and you were just like, wow, that was awesome. Um, and then recently, this other person, a neuroscientist called uh, Stephen Kotler. Um, he wrote a book called uh, How to Be Superman. I think it's How to Be Superman, or the Modern Day Superman, something like that. Um, but he, yeah, he talks about what it's like to be in flow state. So flow state is the thing that everyone's kind of after, like people will call it being in the pocket, in or, the zone, or, something. or in the zone. Yeah. That, that kind of description of I don't know what it was, but I could do no wrong. Yeah, everything just went my way, and that's that's what you aim for when you're in practice. I think is you, you're trying to get in the zone mm. and trying to stay there for as long as you can. Because <laughs> when you do, you can't, you can do no wrong. Your adjustment is the greatest thing that you've ever done and your communication is on fire and then you finish it and you're like, hey, what did I do? <laughs> what did I yeah. say? And the person's walking out like, <laughs> I feel the good. Um, you know, whatever. But it's, it's, that's, that's the thing that you're aiming for. And, um, me personally, I think that's part of what chiropractic is all about. So the stuff that Heidi's researching, how it changes neurochemistry and the function of your prefrontal cortex, I think that is flow state science that she's doing. So when you're adjusting a person, you're clearing up all that weird information inside someone's brain so that they can actually hit that flow state or a version of the flow state a lot easier. So they're actually engaging in life better. Mm-hmm. That's because that's what it's about. Um, but yeah, I mean the examples that he uses are, um, yeah. When you're in a car crash and time dilates, because all of a sudden the brain goes, Ooh, I have to be super hyper vigilant. Yeah. Or surfing is the other one that he uses, or snowboarding, or extreme sports. That's not always chasing that flow state. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Being Heard it a lot in athletes in terms yeah, of athletes that. Yeah, it's super common because yeah. they're constantly chasing it. Yeah, hitting the zone and then, yeah. yeah. But for chiropractic, like I've definitely done it a couple of times this year, and it's That's cool. really yeah. addictive because you're like, man, that was great. <laughs> I can't remember what it was. Oh, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> but then, yeah, but it's, it's yeah, very resistant. And I think definitely being, being in a really good place in terms of where you are, like I'm seeing the right amount of people for where I'm at and I'm seeing the right people yeah. for where I'm at means it's a lot easier rather than being slowed down with, like, for example, pain patients or, yeah. you know, seeing one person and having a half hour break and seeing another person. Do you so, think um, being a master at the craft is someone who can tap into that flow state whenever they want when or is this just something that uh, happens i think being a master of the craft is realizing that you're never perfect right. and you're always going to get better and better i think that's a master i'm a master then so i'm a master then. you're a master yeah <laughs> like I, I put up a quote a little while ago but an expert is someone who's made the most mistakes out of anyone in a particular field yeah <laughs> That's so, cool, yeah. That's, that's neat. Well, we're pretty close then. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I was going to say. There's a couple more mistakes over there. But that's, that's, I really think that that's kind of the mentality. The mentality is, is yeah, I'm not perfect, but I'm better than I was yesterday. And mm. I'm going to be better than I am. I'm going to be better tomorrow than I am today. And you keep working on it. I think that's the art. That's the art of chiropractic. Is there is no perfect adjustment. But it's that, it's that moment of connection, that moment of rightness. Um, like I had an experience with one of my patients the other day. He's got... Crazy bad sciatica, his whole body's a wreck, he's in crutches, it's just been terrible to his body for his entire life, played rugby at a high level a lot when he was younger and then got heavily into partying and drugs and whatnot and now he's 50 something and just wreck, yeah. just just not not good, um, his brain is not talking to his body. I don't know what it was but I was just, yeah I was in my floor, I was just doing it really, really good and I just did like the greatest sacrum adjustment of my life I think. And he was just like, what <laughs> the hell just happened? Um, and just like stood up and was like, I, I can feel my feet again. Yeah. And like left the crutch for his wife to carry out. And wow. he just like walked out the office. And I was like, what? <laughs> um, what did I do? <laughs> like, but it's it's those kind of moments that you chase. And you, you try and achieve those again. And, and yes, it's not about that miracle adjustment, although that was for me. Um, it's about trying to create that experience for every single person. And it's not always going to be, wow, I can walk. <laughs> but it's, you know, like the example that I used before, wow, I was 
having a fun day today and my boss noticed and that was really good for me yeah it's, it's I think it's just those kind of things it's what's what's your success it's exciting times though mm. the future very exciting endless possibilities right <sighs> hope so yeah. a few possibilities coming my way I think what we need to do now is also try and siphon people towards the profession right, in terms of studying it you know isn't that the dream though? Making sure, you know, one of the people that you look after becomes a chiropractor? Yeah, I think that's part of it. In terms of obviously educating the, the public, but also getting people to carry on the greatness of chiropractic, especially from New Zealand. Um, the fact that we're so um, bite sick and, you know, that sort of thing. I like the way you're talking about that. So how are we going to take over the world? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's exactly like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it is. I, I think, I think Step at a time, right? Yeah, chiropractors need to set themselves up as the healthcare profession. So that 23 something percent who are walking away from the current model of health, which is not working for them, who's there to group them? And at this stage, no one is, no, no one's cohesive enough, no one's there enough. And yes, I agree that we need more people in the profession coming through with vitals to chiropractic that obviously the college is offering and they're getting better and better every year, which yeah. is beautiful. Um, but there's plenty of people in the profession right now who aren't doing that. Um, so I'm hoping that you guys will go out and talk to them and be involved with the profession of Wellington and, and inspire them again to be like, remember what it was like when you were early in practice and like the world was sunny and full of rainbows <laughs> Grass and was everything green. was great. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you like nothing was bad and you didn't have assholes in your life and stress and what was going on and everything was fun. Well, yeah, I'm there and enjoy this energy because this is what I'm here to bring in it and your stuff isn't going to bring me down because I'm excited about the future. I want to be great. I'm, I want to be having conversations. I want to be having this shared experience with people and change the world. So how do, you th- how do you think we can be there for those people that are looking away, looking at something different? Is it just with being there in the communities? Or? No, I think we have to market ourselves and set ourselves up to be, like, at, at the moment we, it's kind of like, okay, I'm going I'm to use a Trumpism. Here we go. So the problem is with, like, if you look at the political debate at this stage is what they're doing is they're pointing out the negative thing about the other person. Yeah. You're doing really shit stuff, you're bombing people, you're doing terrible things for people, you grab people inappropriately, you do terrible things. And that, as chiropractors, tends to be what we do. Oh, you medicate people, that's really bad. Oh, you treat symptoms, that's really bad. And you point the finger and tell other people, either chiropractors, other professions, or the medical model, how bad they are and how poorly they're doing something. But then if you truly ask us, well, what are you doing about it that's better? Yeah who says they have a cohesive, well thought out argument. I'm trying to find it. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I think a few practitioners are doing that, but it's in their community. It's not, it's not big, it's not worldwide, it's not at the, at the level that I want to be playing at. Um, so my answer is you have to be the health person. You have to be the place that people go who want to be informed. Because that's that 23%. That yeah. 23% going, I'm not living the life that I want to and I know that I'm not as healthy as I should be but I don't know where the answer is so they try and go down the rabbit hole of nutrition which is really really all over the place and difficult to navigate you try to go down the road of self-medication and supplementation and all of that kind of information that's out there and it's difficult because no one's got guidance so I think we need to be more the guides and say look you have this stuff going on this health crisis this whatever I'm going to do all the tests and I will continue to measure your health the best out of any profession in the world so that you know the most about your body so that you can make the most informed decision for yourself. And hey, guess what? I have probably the best, most natural way to make you, your body and your mind the most kick-ass version of yourself. So do you want to get involved with that too? When you say this, Ben, like, um, these are the people that are coming to you anyway for an alternative sort of no, approach. no or people, people come to see chiropractors with that pain, neck pain and headaches. Really? Yep. <laughs> yeah. They do. Yeah, no, no, that's... That they do. Makes and the college is a little bit different, because it's isolated and it's different, and mm. your marketing niche as an intern is different. Mm. You get out into the profession and that's... Like, but you, you ask the general public, and what do they think of any person? Sure. They say, oh, you go to the GP to get drugs, you go to the physio to get massage, you go to the osteo to get... Oscar. massage and adjust it. You go to the carpet and get cracked. Like that, that's what the general yeah. public think. So how do you change the perception of the general public? You have to have overwhelming media to say exactly what you are. Yeah. 
And unfortunately, if you look at the media, what's what's the current media? What's the current propaganda about chiropractic? Well, the latest thing is apparently that we killed somebody. Is it? Yeah, if you not see that one, that funny that Snapchat model or whatever that's going all around with Facebook recently, and it's like apparently she had a chiropractic stroke, which is bullshit. But that's well, that's just, what's it, being chased yeah. around. I just saw a video about um, migraines being helped with. Spine, yeah, I saw that as well. Care, yeah. Exactly. yeah, yeah. There's this new research that doctors have been doing. Yeah. yeah. Saying that, yeah. you know, you can break through. Yeah, oh man. It's not like we've been doing that for 100 some years. No, but there might be a correlation. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shit. <laughs> sure, it's funny. Man. So, I, yeah, I, so I think we have to set ourselves up as different. That, like, it's, it's all going to be about measurement and how people measure yeah. themselves. So, so trying to create environments so of things like Fitbits and Apple Watches and stuff and devices that people have personally on them that give them information about their health and feedback. Mm-hmm. So how do you create that more accessible so everyone has it? And then you become the person who analyzes that data the most effectively. And, and it's already there in a way with like your insight station and stuff, but it's not being utilized massively by the profession. Yeah. So I think you have to set up yourself a little bit different. So that's the future I'm going to create. And I hope with this kind of platform and, and being able to have conversations with you guys and get inspired by you guys and, and that kind of enthusiasm, enthusiasm and vitality because you're just about to start practice and it's exciting and you're kind of in this really cool place is, you know, how, how can we create this? I, I think that for us to succeed, we can't do our own thing and try and crusade. I think we all have to sacrifice a little bit. We all have to Come lean together, in a little yeah. bit and support each other a little bit and go, I'm not going to hold on to my practice and my mm. people because that's, that's my stuff and say, look, I'm going to lean in and change things and I might change the way that I'm talking to my patients and not talk about that kind with them and that's why they're coming back in to see me and I'm actually going to talk about other things and I might lose a few of them but my practice is going to grow and the, <laughs> the health of the world is going to be better. <laughs> yeah. How's that for a big hearing innovation? That's good. Thanks for asking me, Dad. <laughs> Yeah, so that's that's my dude. Let's change the world. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I don't, know. I don't know how that's going to be created. I have ideas on how to do it, but let's see. Well, if you need any help, you know, <laughs> Chris and I just know what we're Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, screw that. That sounds like way too much work. <laughs> that's going to be a good good character. Yeah. You know, I I think that's what it's about. Just be good. Just like. Uh, and uh, something that I've told myself many, many times this year is just, yeah, I, I, just do your best. Mm. That's all you can do. Just do your best and that's it. Am I doing my best today? Yeah. Is that as good as yesterday? Maybe not. But it's my best today and that's mm. enough. And that's all anyone can ask for me. Um, so, yeah. Mm. Went down quite deep, eh? You guys feeling good? Yeah. Welcome to the car campaign. <laughs> it goes anywhere. It's like a tree hut. <laughs> just kind of come up there and just talk about ideas. That's cool. Things. Yeah, enjoyed it. That's cool. Yeah, thank you guys for coming on the show. You're very welcome. Thank you very it's been much. really fun. It's been cool to kind of pick your brains and, and hear what you guys are about to go into. It's very I think I'm, I'm more excited to go out. Now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I didn't realize I had these <clears throat> opinions or these Yeah, you know, until you really get asked. And then you're like, you know what? Yeah, this is, yeah, this is solid. It's, it's awesome. And embrace it. Chase it. Do it. It's possible. Let's change the world. Maybe I'm in between 25, <laughs> but ain't we yeah, all in between death and life? So try as hard as we can. Thank you, Ben. Well done, well done. Thank you. Thank you for all the support you've been showing this platform. If you have any ideas for future episodes or you'd like to be involved, send me a message through the website or your preferred social media. For the resources mentioned in this episode, check out the show notes or thechirostation.com. If you enjoyed this episode, share it with a friend and leave a comment on Facebook. Now go out there and start a conversation today.